Hi, I'm Dan from DTS Solutions, and in this video today I'll be giving you my initial impressions and thoughts on the Motorola Motor Turbo Ion Smart Radio. So we received our two Ion starter packs, so they come in this very nice Peli case. Um, each has two Ion Smart Radios within it, as well as a variety of different wired and wireless accessories, some of which you can see here. Um, we received them about a week ago, so we've had a week or so to actually get hands on with these devices, set up them on our internal capacity plus system here at our office, um, set them up with the Wave app as well and a few other applications as well. So this video is really just designed to give our initial impressions, talk about some of the fantastic stuff we've found about these amazing devices, but also touch on some of the honest negative points we found as well. So I'm now up close and personal with the, the Motor Turbo Ion, so what I'll just do quickly is, is, is shut it down and, and start it up again just so you can see what that process is, is, is like. Um, we've had our demo units now for about a week, um, so we've been putting them through their paces, we've added them onto our, our internal uh, DMR system here, um, so I'll just start that up again. Overarching impressions when you get hold of the, the ION, it is a big device, it's a chunky device, it, it needs to be for the kind of roles it's going to be used in uh, and for the durability it needs to have. Um, just as we can hear this, that's the, the narrowband side of things powering on, on that top display first, so I can already start making narrowband calls, in this case on our Capacity Plus system here, um, change channel, emergency calls, that kind of thing, whilst the Android side of things is is powering up. Um, so. I'm not going to touch too much on the on the specs because you can go to our website which is www.dts.solutions and, and see the full spec sheet there. But all the key specs you'd expect um, are, are there. So IP68 rated for dust and liquid ingression, tested to all sorts of military standards. Uh, Motorola Solutions have done a fantastic video um, where it shows you some of the tests that this unit is, is put through. Um, it, it really does cover sort of every extreme of temperature and dust and all that kind of thing. So it's worth going and having a, a quick look at that. Um, you've got Gorilla Glass, which can be used with gloves on and everything else like that on that on that display. Um, so yeah, really impressive and, and, and good specs for the kind of environments could be used in you know security, facilities, management, logistics, and that sort of thing. So now that my Android side of things is all powered on, I can ac actually access all of my radio stuff almost as its own separate app through that. So this covers my narrowband radio. Um, so I can see recent, I can change channel, I can change zones and um, there's a few other useful things that I can do like view the battery um, and, and other bits and pieces or change the audio setup, there's a number of other things. The main back end of setting up the, the narrowband radio though is actually done through Radio Central which if you've got access to it via Motorola Solutions um, it's a really, really simple way uh, and really effective way of programming whole fleets of radios, but you need to have access to that in order to, to make significant programming changes on the narrowband side of things here. Um, so the one thing I have noticed, I don't know if you've picked up on it, I've had a couple of times where I've touched the display and it's just seemed not quite as responsive as, as I've normally found an Android device to be. Um, I, I don't know if that's because I've still got the, the screen protector on, but sometimes it takes a couple of swipes. It seems to be behaving itself at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's, that, that, that's fine. I might just be missing something, or as I say, it might be because I've still got the, um, the, the, the sort of the, the cover on. Um, Android wise, as you can see, we've tested it out with all sorts of different apps. Everything works as you'd expect with one notable exception that I'll cover later on within this video. Um, so in fact, what I'll just do quickly is I'll go to the, the, the camera um, this is actually a, a 13 megapixel camera, um, so it's good. It's a good quality camera. It's certainly going to be more than adequate enough uh, for people that are using this device to do their role. The downside, or the only downside, is it's only a rear-facing camera. There is no front-facing camera, so anybody that wants to to, to take <laughs> selfies, I don't know, on their on their eye on is going to struggle to do that. They'll have to turn the camera around and have a have a, have a bit of a guess. But the camera is very good. It's certainly more than adequate uh, against what most people will will, will need. Um, so just going to have a quick look at WAVE as well, so just from a, a broadband push to talk perspective, just touched on the narrowband, but we'll just have a look at WAVE PTX now. Um, and again, everything works as you'd expect, with a slight oversight, I guess, from Motorola, which I think is, I've been told is being fixed in the next few weeks, probably the next couple of months uh, as a worst case scenario. And that's it, if I try and make a push to talk call, um, you'd expect there to be some kind of way of getting the push to talk button on the side here to favour um, 
the broadband, the Wave PTX app for push to talk over the narrow band, in this case, DMR capacity plus side of things. But if you press, it, it, it automatically reverts to, to narrow band and it doesn't seem to be any kind of way of, of, of getting that changed. So I have to press the push to talk button on the display itself to, to make that call on Wave uh, broadband. Um, so yeah, a little bit of an oversight, a little bit of a disappointment, but I think it is something that's going to be resolved in the next couple of weeks. But given it's Motorola's own push to talk broadband app, you'd kind of hope that would have been working from, from day one. But I think probably by the time this video goes live and you're seeing it, uh, that'll probably be resolved anyway, so, so no issue there. Um, just touching on some of the other specifications, so you've got a, a 2820 Impress 2 milliamp hour lithium ion battery uh, on the back. Again, not really had a chance to put it fully through its paces, it's only been a week, but certainly seems very good, um, seems more than adequate and seems to, to, to run, run really, really well, but obviously we'll keep you posted as, as we find out more about that. Um, it's four gig of RAM in the device, uh, 32 gig of internal storage. Again, I think that's gonna be absolutely fine for the kind of people and the kind of environments that, that this is gonna be used by. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, as I say, everything all very, very well laid out. There's a few audio accessories that we've got here as well, so far as Bluetooth is concerned. So I've got like a Bluetooth remote speaker mic just here behind the, the Ion. Um, I've got the, a couple of Bluetooth uh, Motorola wireless, um, wireless earpieces again. Audio quality from the device as well is absolutely outstanding in our experience so far, both on the narrow band, so in this case DMR, capacity plus side of things, and on the, uh, the broadband side, so where we've tested it with Wave. Really, really good, um, no complaints there at all. Um, and and um, yeah, certainly seems to be a lot better than a lot of the other multi-mode devices that we've, that, that we've tried. So that's really, really good. Um, so overarching, we're really impressed. It, it, it definitely does have a, an excellent place, an excellent place to fit here within the UK market especially. Um, so there's a couple of things that slightly take the shine off it, maybe a couple of disappointments, oversights, uh, one of which is a bit more of a big deal than the other one. Um, so the first one is, and the one we've probably had the biggest pushback on, um, has, has been the, um, the price. So these are retail at £1,740 plus VAT each. And initially, most people will hear that and they'll think, well, oh, that, that sounds horrendous. But if you actually stop and think for more than a couple of minutes uh, and you think of what this device is and what it's designed to achieve, you can kind of see how it makes sense. So I've got over here, I've got a, a DP4801E as a radio. I've also got the, uh, the Lex L11 um, ruggedized Android smartphone from, from, from Motorola. And, and it really is designed to replace kind of both of these elements, your smart device, smartphone aspect of things and your uh, your, your two-way radio and a, a ruggedized smart device you're going to be spending 600 700 maybe up to a thousand pounds maybe even more for a good ruggedized android smart device or, and 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 then looking at the the two-way radio side a premium radio feature rich radio which would most compare to the features you've got in an ion like the 4801e um, would be about 600 pound, 550, 600 pound recommended retail price. So you can see where the two kind of things come into play and how they've got to that kind of price. Um, like the high tier of the PDC 760 when that came out, that's sort of probably one of the most other recognized uh, versions of this, but been out for a good few years now to be fair. When that came out, that came out around this kind of price as well. So it's not too big a, a shock. And certainly I don't imagine there'll be many people, particularly if you're buying these in quantities, that will pay recommended retail price for this device. Um, you'll probably get a few percent off of it as well. And it is a brand new device. I, I sort of hasten to, to add that. So there may be some price changes as, as the months and years go on. I, I, I genuinely don't know. Um, the other disappointment, which is not really something I can massively get my head around, um, it's a bit more of a big deal to us, um, is that you can't make phone calls on the ION, um, certainly not traditional cellular phone calls. And that is a real disappointment. When you think about what this device has been designed for and who it's designed to be used by, you, you're looking at somebody who's often gonna have a, it's meant to replace a, a smartphone and a radio, but a lot of the time people that need that smart device are, are needing the phone call aspect of it. So I'm a bit surprised that Motorola didn't include that. Now there are ways and, and means around it. So we've downloaded a few, um, apps for Android that would allow you to make phone calls over data. Um, 
but there's no there's also no way within the settings so within a, within a most android smart devices or smartphones i should say there is usually a setting that allows you to automatically um, select or prefer a uh, the device for phone calls so for, to select an app so if there's an app that you'd favor rather to do phone calls but you don't have any kind of ability it just seems to be locked down there's there's nothing in here that allows you to do that so yesterday we were testing with uh, critical arc um, their omniguard app and they uh, allow phone calls as part of that and they will select whatever um, app is standard for making phone calls so if there was just a way to associate that with like a sip account um, that would have been so much better but that feature seems to be completely removed so something we're talking to motorola about because to me that seems like the biggest sort of area of weakness of this device um, because certainly all the high tier um, smart devices do tend to, to 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 do that allow the phone calls certainly the multi-mode devices of, of this kind of pricing um, so yeah it seems to be a bit of an oversight there are ways and means around it but i think overarching because uh, I want to leave on a, on, a, on a positive note because this is an absolutely brilliant device. It is something that we're really going to be um, proud to, to, to show off and, and demonstrate. Um, I, I, I can't think of too many areas that this wouldn't fit in for people that are looking to combine that if we can find a way around that, that phone issue. Um, so yeah, if you want to arrange a, a demo for this kind of device or if you want to arrange a demo for, for the ION, um, we are now doing it. At the moment, it's all done or most of our, 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 our demos are done remotely. Um, given we're still in the midst of uh, COVID-19 lockdown still. Um, so do feel free to drop us a line uh, and we'd be more than happy to, to set up a demo. So I really hope you found that review, albeit quite brief, really helpful. Um, if you'd like to know more about the ION, we've got a couple of blogs live on our website at the moment, which can be found on www.dts.solutions. You can always feel free to give us a call as well on 0800 542 7860 or email sales at dts.solutions for more information. We're hoping to have a lot more review videos of this kind uh, going live over the coming weeks. So do keep posted on our YouTube channel. Keep checking out our website news section as well. Thanks very much.